ladies and gentlemen. First, my apologies. I really did intend to be here this morning, but events conspired uh, to prevent this. So, not only do you have the benefit of this, this impeccably produced video, but you've also got uh, the marginal assistance of my cutout, which is now something like 10 years old. So what I want to talk about, what am I going to talk about? I've become very interested, as indeed other parts of the university here have, in um, human-centered design, which could be sort of, of being at least one of the branches of what ergonomics is all about. In fact, I was privileged um, to be able to um, start the department uh, by giving an inaugural lecture at the Business Centre in Islington. And I call this um, inclusive or exclusive because even at that stage I found there was some sort of contradiction in the, in the um, terms of reference of, of the department because on one hand inclusive design means of course having a design which is usable by everybody from a dearly a small child to an adult to a disabled person. Um, while exclusive design panders to the very human desire uh, to be different from other people. So human-centered could either be inclusive or it's certainly as far as consumer goods are concerned or fashion clothes are concerned um, would be very much more like exclusive design. And I've, I've still, these two, these two concepts still battle inside my mind. I can't make the slide go forward. Now this is a slide uh, which um, I use to annoy my uh, engineering colleagues, uh, but I do really believe what it says on it. And that is that there is, a, I think, an, an attitude in society and in government um, that the 21st century will be a bit like the 20th century, only more so. Um, that the advance of technology will speed up and get faster and faster, uh, that uh, Europe will retain, or Europe and the West will retain its preeminence in um, technological and scientific invention. But I don't somehow think it's going to be like that, because uh, I can feel, that it is almost like a, a gut feeling, that innovation, a much Ill misused word, in the 21st century, is not going to be so much in science and technology, but in the way in which society organizes itself and using probably contemporary technology. Now, I may be biased in this because I work very largely in the social care and health field now, being 81 years old myself, so I feel I, I, feel I need it. And I'm very conscious of the fact that both social services and uh, the National Health Service have erected very powerful barriers against innovation. As in fact, very, very difficult to, to uh, introduce innovation, whilst there is a huge queue of 20 years worth of inventions and technological improvements, which would improve the services immeasurably if only they could be applied. But this is why I've put the words contemporary technology very much um, at the bottom of the slide, and incidentally, use it myself as a way of designing equipment and devices and services for people um, in, that, in, in this field of requiring social and, and, and health care. Now, where are we? Um, we are, I think, in a state of our culture where quite a number of traits of the human character, which have always been there, but which would be regarded perhaps to be antisocial, are increasing. Uh, those are the red arrow going upwards, and where perhaps more old-fashioned and, and desirable standards are decreasing. The blue arrow with things like religion, good manners, respect for authority, consideration and responsibility for children are on the whole being reduced in our society. And that too can't go on. And this is why I put this big emphasis on um, social sustainability being the real problem which people in the 21st century um, have, to, have, to, have to solve. Now we have another problem, and that is that over, just over the horizon, not very far over the horizon, there are very rapidly tiger economies like China and India and Brazil and uh, Malaysia, where production is already outstripping our own production to the point where manufacturing industry in Britain is no longer 
cannot be significant. But I unfortunately foresee the point where they may also um, outstrip us in development and science, and perhaps even ultimately in very clever science. But anyway, that may be that maybe still some time away. What do we have to do in terms of design, and design of course incorporates ergonomics, of the products which are going to be produced in the foreseeable future? Well, without any doubt whatsoever, there's going to be increasing demand, demand and competition for raw materials, like energy and oil and chemicals and food, and where we we'll probably have to adjust our own expenditure and, our, and the, the demands we put on the material world to something which is rather much rather lower. In fact, I really set my, hat, my eye on the 1970s or the early 1980s as being perhaps the kind of standard uh, we, we may have to, to um, adopt. So what does a, a new product have to, what quality does a new product have to do? Well, I think it has to be of much higher quality and durability, so that you can use it for very much longer without increasing the, the waste and the continuous circulation of having to produce products which only have a product life of six months or so, before something else takes its place, which functionally is really no, diff no different. So this has an impact on, on fashion as such, but it also has an impact on quality. I think they actually, actually have to last and they have to be durable, and this, of course, means that they will also be more expensive. It doesn't mean that it necessarily causes unemployment, because to make a real quality product, one which is more expensive, may take as many man hours as, as, as would have taken to make a less durable product, but to make, make many more of it. So quality and durability is an essential quality, but we may well have to adjust the way we actually acquire the use of these devices, because they may be too expensive, like a house, uh, to buy them outright at leasing something, or having it only for a certain amount of time, or perhaps even for even sharing it with somebody else, may have to be much more common. So there will have to be innovation not only in the way which things are designed, but also in the thing in which they are sold or made available to the public. The next one, which I think is very much very important and very much at the core of uh, human-centered design, is that you want to be able to change it, because fashion will continue to operate. So I've coined a word which is called makeover, makeoverability, which means that you take your high quality product, but you can modify it relatively cheaply with not very much expenditure to be different. It's really like having the good black dress, which from a, from a famous couturier, which you take to the lady around the corner uh, for next year, and you have some of the flower put on one side and the hem shortened a bit and so on, and it becomes a different dress. And the, the structure really remains the same. But this ability to be modified um, may well be an important part, an important part of the design of anything for a motor car, that there might be built on or built off accessories um, to furniture and to, to clothes and all the kinds of things which we regard at the moment as practically being um, expendable. And, and sometimes it may also change the function of the device. I mean, it may, it may work slightly differently because people's, the way people manage their lives um, will become different. And then, very much a hobby horse, the third quality, which, which, is, which on the slide says requirement for manipul more manipulation, because I think these, my hands, or your hands, are almost as marvelous as the brain. And Homo sapiens, Produce this huge leap away from its from its ancestors, the much more ape-like creatures, by starting a, a virtuous circle of the cooperation of hand of hand, eye, and brain, going in a virtuous circle all the time, and tool making is very much an, an expression of that, because to make a tool to crack the nut is relatively easy, to make a tool to make another tool to make a third tool which will achieve some desired um, result requires a degree of mental imagination, I mean, of imagination, which as far as I'm aware, no animal can, can equal, but which we can do without any very much trouble. So I think we've done ourselves a great disfavor of putting our hands at a discount. That what most people use their hands for now is to, is to manipulate a keyboard, whilst in my youth, and in perhaps in the use of some of, some of the audience, using 